Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. I'm your host Raj. Friends, uh, today I am breaking from my usual tone. As someone who tries to stay positive, focus on facts, and always looks on the glass as half full, I have to admit the events unfolding in 2025 make that extremely difficult. I've been observing the HIV landscape and commenting for the last three years in this channel. I've never felt so disappointed. This video is about the global HIV crisis exacerbated by Trump's foreign aid policies. We will cover the collapse of major HIV funding programs like PEPFAR, the massive wave of treatment disruptions in Sub-Saharan Africa, the loss of healthcare workers and testing services, and what this could mean for millions of people living with HIV globally. What this means for the future of ART is again a very important question that many people are not asking. Let's get into the details. Welcome back. In the early 2025, earlier this year, the Trump administration slashed most US foreign aid, including global HIV AIDS support. That far funding was halted. Contribution to UN AIDS and WHO were withdrawn. Thousands of foreign aid contracts were cancelled overnight. The result? Clinics shut down, health workers were laid off. HIV programs across Asia and Africa began unraveling. Of course, it's not all doom and gloom. Bill Gates came out and pumped in a lot of funds, but even Bill Gates had to acknowledge that he cannot make up for all the funds that have been withdrawn by the US government. Across Africa, many countries were hit hard. South Africa, which lost 20% of its HIV budget, Mozambique, where 2 million people lost access to HIV services. Malawi, where NGOs seized services and thousands of workers were fired. Antiretroviral drug supplies dried up. Testing programs halted. Prevention campaigns stopped mid rollout 11 million additional HIV infections by 2030 is predicted if PEPFAR isn't restored immediately. 3 million more AIDS-related deaths are likely a 400% increase in AIDS mortality without replacement funding. These are dire consequences. Some estimates suggest 14 million lives could be lost by 2030. Ending AIDS by 2030 now seems to be off the track. The UN AIDS Executive Director has warned that testing and data collection are collapsing. Global coordination has fractured. The goal to end AIDS by 2030 is now further out of reach. With the US pulling out of UN AIDS and WHO, the entire architecture for tracking and fighting HIV globally has taken a hit. If you live in the global south or if your country's HIV services were supported by US aid, you are likely feeling the impact already. You don't need me to tell you about that. Even if you are not directly affected, this matters because HIV doesn't respect borders. This is what the Trump administration does not understand. A global health setback in one region often becomes a wider crisis. And what's more important is that for developing therapies for HIV, it takes decades. And for it to become uh, HIV resistant, it just needs the ART users to stop using ART and HIV can mutate and become drug resistant. The extent of damage from ART funding cuts is still not quite clear. However, the Trump administration 2025 foreign aid cuts have definitely caused a humanitarian crisis that could undo 20 years of global HIV progress. I've put a list out here of ART components and when they were approved. It takes approximately 5 to 15 years from idea to approval of a therapy. As you can see, all the therapies are either preventative or suppressive on regular dosing. As Jeff Galvin uh, explained, industry has focused more on giving a repeated dosing in order to keep HIV under control rather than providing a cure. 
There is no cure so far. Imagine if millions do not get ART and their HIV becomes drug resistant. We'll be back to the drawing board. Most of the ART may not work. The loss of free ART will cause a surge in deaths, new infections and drug resistance. And decades of research and billions invested in developing and distributing ART are now threatened. Resistance to ART components could render some drugs ineffective, requiring new expensive therapies and further research. The global HIV response relies on continuous access to ART. Interruptions not only harm individuals, but also jeopardize public health gains. They increase drug resistance and risk undoing decades of scientific and humanitarian progress. Even if U.S. funding is eventually restored, the damage is already being felt. And friends, at this stage, I want to definitely acknowledge that I am an eternally optimistic person. Though I have not been personally touched by HIV, I've always drawn on my experience from the rest of my life, professional life and otherwise, where optimism and a positive outlook has always made life easier and led to better outcomes. With that experience in my mind, I've always I've always made sure that if there were commentators who were extremely negative, I was always the first one to tell them to stop being negative and to see the glass as being half full rather than half empty. But I think that many of you who feel very strongly about the industry and about um, HIV being used as a cash cow, uh, I'm starting to agree with you you know, after three years, and especially after looking at what has happened with the recent reversal of um, funding by the Trump administration, uh, it brings to sharp relief uh, the fact, which also Jeff Goldman pointed out, industry has been constantly supporting uh, creation of antiretroviral therapy to keep HIV suppressed with regular dosage. That means regular income for these companies. And I always believed that the cure was very difficult because the virus is complicated. And now that we have so many tools at our disposal, like gene editing, gene sequencing, um, delivery mechanisms to deliver uh, gene editing um, payload to targets, I think it's high time that industry started to um, favor coming up with a cure rather than trying to milk the PLHIV population on a daily, monthly, and weekly basis uh, in order to keep generating profits. So it's with great reluctance that I have to come to this conclusion. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, I'm going to stop being optimistic, uh, but it's a heavy dose of reality, uh, which uh, seems quite unpalatable to me, to be frank. This video is not meant to bring you down. It's just meant to acknowledge what many of you have been saying for years and what may, what I have been suppressing for many years by asking you to look at the positive side. I agree that um, we should not be totally negative, but along with positivity, we have to be realist. And I think the time for being a realist is now. So even if you are not getting free ART, I would request that you try to get the ART by, your, ART by yourself somehow and make sure that your strain of HIV doesn't get uh, drug resistant. This is very important. And also I would like to point out to the larger audience that do not have HIV, to the larger audience that has contempt for LGBTQ and other groups which are more prone to HIV. I'm, I'm telling you that if HIV is not controlled where it is right now, each and every one of you are going to be introduced to this deadly virus one way or the other. It's the ART and the regular intake of ART being done by responsible PLHIV that is preventing the rest of the world from suffering this problem. If you take away the ART, despite the best wishes of PLHIV people, HIV is just going to run amok among the human civilization. And this is a dire consequence which is now not unimaginable. With ART and research ongoing for a functional and a sterilizing cure, uh, it was a hope, a very strong hope, that we as an intelligent human race would be able to overcome the HIV virus. But right now, things are not looking that great.
Well, friends, that brings me to an end of today's somber video. And I need your support to make sure that this channel can become a very strong voice for PLHIV and advocate your cause. And for that purpose, I would like you guys to become a member of HIV, uh, Shire Trek HIV channel and support my work for more update like this. And also to enable me to become your voice and bring it to the industry. And this is something that you can do at the very least. So check out the membership today and join at the lowest level. That's, that's okay. But when we have the numbers behind the channel, it helps me uh, to make inroads into the industry and make your voice heard to them and to bring their voice to you. Well, friends, with that, it would be remiss of me not to thank our 40 members for supporting this channel. The number is still at 40 and I think the 3000 odd uh, people who watch most of the videos and the 20,000 odd subscribers of the channel cannot afford now to stand in the sidelines. You got to get involved right now. Become a member today. Support the channel. Give me the strength of your numbers so that I can discuss all of your concerns with the industry. Right now, the way it stands, the industry does not recognize the channel as being a leading voice for PLHIV. With that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.